Welcome to episode two of creating the ConvertKit marketing site design system. Now let me address two things right away. Number one, I've been sick. That's why my voice might be sounding a little bit odd. And number two, I know that I uploaded episode one of the series back in like May, about seven and a half months ago. And I've had people asking, what happened to the series? Why is there only one episode? And those are very fair questions. And I have to be honest, progress on the design system has been a lot slower than we wanted or expected. If you watch that first episode, you'll know that we're a very small team working on this project just two designers, one developer, and quite simply, we had a lot to prioritize in 2022, aside from developing the design system. The biggest thing being shipping a brand new code base for our marketing website. Let me tell you about that and catch you up on what we have been working on in our system over the past seven months. So the code base. You will have heard Corey talk a little bit about what we're calling belovedly site 2.0 in the last video, but basically the entire ConvertKit site has brand new code behind it now. Visually, it hasn't had very many improvements, but all of the code that's putting content on the page has been updated to this new flexible system built using React that's gonna allow us to have parity between the components that David and I build in design in Figma and the components that Corey builds on the site, which is very cool. Now we had big dreams of shipping a ton of new components with a new code base, lots of redesigned pages, but in reality, we ended up just rebuilding and shipping what existed previously for the most part. That was just the fastest way we could get the new code base live, start feeling the benefits of it, not only in our process between design and dev, but also in our site speed. So that's what had to happen. We rebuilt a lot of things that we know are not gonna like live on past this year, hopefully, but we got the new code base live. We shipped it on time. I'm very proud of the team for that, especially of Corey. As our sole developer, the majority of the work for this project was on his plate and he deserves a big round of applause for getting that shipped. Now though, let's move on and take a look inside Figma at what we have been working on since that last update video. So you know how in the last episode, I joked about the fact that we'd already refactored our button component like three times. Well, we did it again. This is what our button component is looking like now. David went in and did a bunch of refactoring to set it up with, we've got um, hover states, focus states, disabled states. There's component properties now for like the button labels, for the icons. I'm hopeful this will be the last time we have to refactor it. Touch wood, um, please let that be the case. But yeah, this is a much more robust system now. As you can see, David's also documented it really well. And um, hopefully this will serve us going forward. David also refactored our grid component um, or like styles, I guess. It's not really a component in the grid. As you can see, he's documented this too. This refactoring was mostly to add in this margin and padding here at the side of the page so that we can have content in a container, like the navigation, for example, if this was behind here. Content can have a container where the content still reaches to the edge of the grid, but then there is enough padding and margin that a container can be around it without touching the edge of the page. I really should have had David on to explain this part because he did a much better job of it than me. But yeah, this new grid system has been serving us well in the new pages that we've been laying out so far. Though I did just notice that we need to update this um, component here, which is our like website frame that we drag in as a starting point for every new project because it's got our old navigation and footer in it. And we did redesign those when we launched the new site. But now let's move on to some newer components, shall we? So first thing here, pretty basic. This is a heading and text block component. That needs a better name. If you've got a suggestion for that, please leave it down below in the comments. But this is a component that is basically all over our site. Anywhere there's a page with content, this component is probably gonna be used. And I've set it up, if I drag one in from the side here, I've set it up with all of the different heading sizes, all of the different paragraph sizes, and you know, then you can mix and match between them. You can have an icon next to the heading, on top of the heading, without an icon. It's responsive as well, so if you wanna drag it out to go over more columns, then you can. This is one of those components that I'm sure, like the button, is gonna end up being refactored a few times, but it's served us well already. It's been very helpful to have in the system just to grab, drag it into a page that you're mocking up and be able to quickly have that heading and, and paragraph there. And as you can see, when you start to think about all of the options, there is a, uh, yeah, there's a lot of variance. <laughs> Down here as well, I started laying out a few rules for how we use these components together, like whether there's paragraphs after a heading at the start, or if it's just a heading and what happens to the image when we stack it on tablet and mobile size. We're not completely settled on this yet. We need to apply these to a few more pages first before we can be sure of that. But yeah, this is this is a start of defining some like, yeah, section types in our system. Another one that I set up is this curved divider. We use these often on pages like between site sections. And this is set up with options for color. You can change the direction that this goes in. Well, you're meant to be able to. Okay, well, something's broken in this component. <laughs> 
I don't know what's going on there. We're going to need to fix that later. But yeah, also there's this breakpoint for different screen sizes as well because the curve divider gets shorter when it's on a smaller screen. And this is also responsive as well. So you can drag it out to fit whatever screen size you need in between these breakpoints. Okay, noting that as one to fix later. Uh, moving on, <laughs> we've got this article card here, which is currently in action on our blog. There's two different like versions of this article card. One has a shadow behind it, which is used when the card is on a colored background, just so it like sets out from the background a little bit. And then the other is this one with a border. This is a component that has been built in the new site system, but it hasn't really been designed QA'd as a component, if that makes sense. So we need to go back and do that. And I guess I'll probably talk more in the next video about how we're doing design and dev QA for building these components. But yeah, for now, the base of it is there. We have a starting point to work from, which is exciting. I feel like I've already seen a few things about this, um, like the interactions of this component that needs to change after it being live and like experiencing it, getting to play around with it. There's a few things I want to do differently. So this will be one that you will hear about refactoring in a future episode. And then the last new component to tell you about is this one here, which is a testimonial quote. This one entered our system when I designed the product overview page. We just decided we wanted to have a way to feature a nice large testimonial quote that got a nice big photo of a creator in there. Again, this is one that's been built in the new system, but not QA'd as a component as such. So yeah, there's a few things that we need to tweak, like the photo at the moment isn't expanding in height with the quote, it's staying as a little square. But yeah, if I drag this in and show you, this is one where you can change the color of the border that goes around so that it can match whatever background that it's on. You can have the photo on the left or the right. Oh good, I'm glad this component is working. <laughs> and then I've set up also component uh, properties for the quote so that you can um, edit the text in here and have it update in the component. I think this is a really useful component that's going to appear in a lot of our like feature pages across our site when we want to bring in some social proof as well as nice image of a creator. That's definitely a big part of our brand is making creators the hero. So I like having a nice big photo of them. And shout out to my friend Austin. He animated the Charlie Marie TV intro that you see at the start of all of my videos. And he's also a ConvertKit customer. So now his photo lives in our design system. I'm sure that in a future video, I'll be updating you on ways we've um, added other testimonial quotes. This is like a very large one and I know we're going to need much more subtle ones as well in our system. But yeah, this is what we're working with for now. Okay, the last thing I want to talk to you about in this video is our illustration system, which is like part of our design system, but also kind of a system of its own. Previously, our illustration styles were kind of all over the place. There was like generally a hand drawn feel to them, but the way we used color and like what hand drawn pens we used varied wildly. And um, yeah, we just didn't have a system behind this before. We had never defined the rules. So that is what we are now setting out to do. I've been working really closely with our wonderful freelance graphic designer, Holly on this. We've been doing a ton of explorations, as you can see in here, there's like lots of different pen styles and weights that have been used. And yeah, we're really settling in on what we want the rules of our system to be. This was, if I come back over here, I showed this in a vlog, but um, this is the mood board for our illustrations system. It's like we want things to feel kind of loose and sketch noty, definitely hand drawn, but not in a way that's like too cutesy, too textured, too detailed, as you can see here. And I'm really happy with where we're ending up actually. So what we've come up with is a system of three levels. Level one is the smallest level. This is for an illustration that's essentially just a small step up from an icon. We want it to be a little bit more detailed than that, feel a little bit more, more custom. Level two is for an illustration that is more of a spot illustration. It's going to be larger, a little bit more more detailed. It wants to command a little bit more attention or like help explain a concept. And then level three is our like largest size of illustration. These are for the hero feature illustrations. We use in empty states in the app, on the blog, um, perhaps like on social media as a standalone image as well. And as you can see, they get more detailed as you go um, up the levels. So this process, everything you see in here and all of these comments has been about figuring out what we want our rules to be. And I feel like we're getting pretty close on this. This is something that I think I'll go into in more detail in a future video. Um, but our next steps here are to start applying the rules we've defined and the system that we want to work within to some of these um, key concepts that we know we're going to need illustrated. So we're going to work on a level one, two, and probably three for each of these things. And then um, as we go about designing new pages, as the product designers take a look at applying illustrations within the app, we will create new illustrations as and when we need them and make it this like living, breathing system that we're constantly adding to that people can pull from for presentations and things like that as well. I'm really excited about this. It's been super fun to work on and it's fun to be seeing it 
come to life. Next up, we need to start working on our product imagery system as well. This is again, something that um, needs some better definitions and rules in place, as well as some like base images pre-created living in a system that people can just copy and paste and pull from when they need to. So that's what's coming up next for us as well as finishing off the illustration system. Also what's coming up next is redesigning pages. We're gonna be tackling a redesign of our homepage next, and I'm sure there'll be new pieces added into our design system as a result of that. I'm also working on like a simple template for an ad landing page that will again require some new components or us figuring out what the rules are for using the components that we already have. I will definitely share updates much more often this year, I promise you, as we work on developing the system. If you missed the first episode in the series, then definitely go back and watch that right here. It talks about what our goals are for the system, like why we're working on it, as well as what our process is going to be for tackling it and bringing it to life as well. So make sure you're subscribed to see future updates in the series and I will see you in the next video.